is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be here today with Jay Golden. He's uh, I'm at the Mena Contemporary, and he's part one of the artists of the SCAF, yeah. SCAF um, residencies, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for being oh, here, Jay. Thank you for having me. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. A little cool, bit cool. tired, but... A little bit tired? You yeah. got this. You got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I know today is the, the closing reception, so I... Um, we're here like early in the morning, so I really appreciate you taking the time for me to oh, yeah, no do this interview prior, because I know you must be so busy with like getting the studio ready and everything yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So do you want to start off telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm um, Jay Golding. I'm a figurative artist. A lot of my work is kind of inspired by my Jamaican heritage, infused with the influence that African culture has had in my life since I was a child. So oh, wow. a lot of my stuff, um, you'll see figures wearing masks from Africa, um, Mexico, I was recently there during the pandemic, so just the inspiration I got from being there and the people and some of the ceremonies I did just started to seep into the work and that's actually been the biggest inspiration so far in the series that I'm working on. But yeah, you, know, you know, from Jersey for the most part, um, I left Jamaica when I was seven and throughout my life I was, I used to draw on and off, didn't really it wasn't something that I really looked at as a career, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until after I left high school where I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I just said, you know what, let me study art, yeah. and after I went to, I studied at Keene, after I went to Keene and just had really good mentors that kind of helped me just um, learn the basic fundamentals, it just pushed me to really take it another step further. Oh, well, that's dope, and do you think being from another culture has like influenced your work? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, even just, I think even just the way that I um, interact with other people and interact with people from different cultures, it's it's kind of, for me, it feels more natural because yeah. I, I remember just coming here being an immigrant and, yeah. and going to school for the first time and having a heavy accent and yeah, seeing yeah. how people responded to the way that I spoke. And so whenever I go other places and meet other people from other cultures, it's just, there's that um, relationship I feel that I just automatically have with them. Mm-hmm. That's really dope. Thank you for sharing that. And what's your creative process like in your studio? Are you uh, like an artist that go in the morning? Like, do you prefer to work in the morning, the nighttime, the afternoon? So it, it kind of changes. It shifts. Um, I go through like, I go through these weird shifts where sometimes I like to work very early, and then other times I'll be up late. Um, as of as of lately, um, it's been more. I come in in the morning. And then by like 5, 6 p.m., I'm usually out of the studio. Oh, wow. And then I just go and rest. And, but then there's some, there's some moments where, for whatever reason, I'll just be up late till like 3 a.m. sometimes. Oh, wow. And I'll just be like a night owl. So I go through these weird back and forth shifts within um, just how I, how I stay up at night or just morning person, night person, yeah. morning person, night person. On so you're just so like basically like spontaneous. You yeah. Just let yeah, I just kind of let the, especially creatively, yeah. I would say especially creatively, I, um, a lot of times now I like to just allow um, whatever that creative flow is at the moment, I, I kind of let that set the pace and then I just meet it, meet it halfway and just work yeah. with it from there. Oh, that's pretty dope. And then do you get inspired by like um, other people, like you're an artist that you kind of have to be by yourself or do you enjoy like having people around you or pets or anything like that? Um, so that's another one where it's kind of like both like with this residency, it's been mm -hmm. beautiful because all the other artists, it's such an international group as well. So yeah. I've just been learning a lot from all the other artists. Like I'll take a break sometimes when I'm painting and go sit with Louise. Oh, or wow. Leonard, Shout out to Louis. Yeah. Or Leonard, Patricia, yeah. and just we'll have conversations and, um, we'll, we'll give each other feedback on our work. So mm -hmm. having that has been very great because the last time I had something like that was when I was actually studying in school. And so it's, it's, I can, I can go without that, but it feels really great to have it. So yeah. I think the main thing is just that balance. Yeah. And when you get in the studio, like how, what's your routine? Like, do you get to work right away? Do you need like a coffee, like read the paper, you know, chill out for an okay. hour? Um, it's usually tea. Like I'll usually, okay. um, if I get here before everyone else, 
I usually just, you know, just unwind a little bit and um, just kind of look at some of the pieces that I started working on and just kind of take it in. And usually I'll go over to where Louise is because she has the um, she has the, the, the tea maker. Uh-huh. So I will usually go over there and oh, start making tea. Cool. And then she usually come in right around that time and we'll yeah. have a chat. And then I'll usually get to work. You know, I have to share something. You have, like, very good energy and very good vibes. Oh, thank you. And I swear, like, everybody that has good energy and good vibes, they always start, like, the, the, they're an artist. They always start with tea. So that's yeah. so funny because I just recently observed that, like, interviewing different people or, like, going to my friend's studio. Yeah. Like, when I see tea, I'm like, oh, you know, I can always tell because they're chill. But when I see coffee, I'm like, okay, they're going to they're oh, more, yeah. like, get to work. They don't have patience because I'm like that. Like, I drink, yeah, like, five like espressos <laughs> in the moment, in the morning. I don't have patience for anything until I get to work. Leonard's like that. Leonard loves coffee. Yeah. And he's always him and um Patricia, they both are coffee drinkers. Okay. And do you ever have like did you ever do a collaboration with any artists, like painting wise or art making? Yeah. Um so I have a bunch of collaborations actually and that's something that I've been thinking about um lately. About actually presenting that soon. So the last collaboration I did man, had to be about Last year, actually, um, a friend of mine who's in, he lives in Bushwick. He goes, he's an um, amazing tattoo artist. He actually did these two tattoos. Right well, I was checking it out. That's yeah. dope. He goes by Above the Spell. And oh, so wow, this is cool, too. Yeah. That looks like, what is that? It kind of looks like Polynesian-inspired. So that's like, he, he can probably tell you better, but that's like some of these, he calls it like his cosmic symbols. Uh-huh. And so he creates them. He told me that this little... Um, triangle right here is a mushroom actually oh that's dope and, and these are like some of his characters that he creates so that's really dope. amazing artist we're talking about his tattoos right now and if you're comfortable i'd love to share those on instagram so people get a, a oh, yeah, live and they know what we're talking yeah, about no that's problem. pretty dope because that kind of looks like a little more akami but like more more like fun and chill you know which one this one yeah that one yeah yeah like the like the yeah you would love his work i'll show you his work that's really cool yeah we'll definitely share that on the instagram and then also, like, who, who, who's your influences? Like, who are you inspired by? Is it, like, only the art world, music, fashion, architect? Mm, okay, so I'm going to start with the art for a little bit. So um, in terms of, like, the paint, you know, painters and things mm-hmm. like that, um, it's a mixture. It was, um, when I was in school, I studied Caravaggio a lot, just, like, his techniques. Um, Frida Kahlo in mm-hmm. terms of... Um, just her ability to express her emotions. I really like that about yeah. her. So I kind of like studied that about her and just like tapped into that to just really be more vulnerable with some of my work. Um, Picasso came a little bit later. Mm-hmm. I didn't really care for Picasso when I was in school, um, but a little bit of Van Gogh, Michelangelo, like some, you know, um, Norman Rockwell. One of my um, mentors is actually, he studied under Rockwell, so mm-hmm. um, learned a lot from him. And as of um, lately, there's a bunch of artists that I've just been finding through Instagram. So a bunch of the young artists that are doing things now. Um, one is um, Rayless Vasquez. He's an amazing Dominican artist. Um, Kyrie Turner, Chloe Wise. There's so much. There's so many artists. And then in terms of fashion, I'm not really, I'm not a heavy, I'm not really, my cousin is more into fashion. So I'm not really, I don't really follow fashion brands, but in terms of fashion, I would say, like, if I just see anything that's kind of, like, African-inspired in mm-hmm. some way or even, like, anything that has, like, a ninja aesthetic, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm drawn oh, to. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm very drawn to those types of looks. So sometimes I, um, I play off of that a little bit and mm-hmm. try to incorporate some of those to my works, like, um, even, like, ancient Greek mythology armor. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes oh, I'll dope. blend that and yeah. blend it with African culture um, types of fashion and put that on some of the characters because um, mythology is also another theme that yeah. is very like woven into my work so. yeah you should come to Brazil have, like a lot I have of, friends in Brazil yeah. now so I'm definitely yeah, gonna to visit check it out. Yeah, yeah. we'll definitely like link up and stuff that, is that there. where you're from yeah I'm from Brazil yeah, 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 yeah. Kill me, I need to go yeah like, I feel like you would love like the north yeah um art and architecture because it's very much like as you mentioned before yeah my friend Matthew who's there now he was actually so Two years ago, like during the pandemic, or three mm-hmm. years now, I would say, um, left Jersey for a little bit with um, a cousin, my cousin, and some friends, and went to California just to be there for a month, and then that turned into four months. Oh wow! And then I ended up in Tulum. Oh for, wow! Like, four months. Oh, that's amazing. And during that four months time in Tulum, my friend Matthew, who was with us, he met um, someone Laiz, who's Brazilian, mm-hmm. and 
he ended up going out there with her and they, no have, they have a baby now. Wow. And so they always tell me, you need to come, you need to yeah. come. And Matthew says all the time, like, Brazil is just like a bigger Jamaica. That's yeah. what he always tells me. Yeah, we have like a huge um, Jamaican population. Like one of my yeah. mom's best friends, she met this lady, she was Jamaican. And they were both like, give, they met, they were both pregnant and about to give birth. So they just, I guess, met somehow, somehow each other yeah. in the hospital. And me and her kids are still friends to this day. Wow. She taught me like the That's joke and twist. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like a lot of stuff, like a lot of like slangs and stuff. Yeah. But it's always the best with the best culture. Like, I love how like the family orientation is, you know, yeah. how everybody's so close to help. Like, even with strangers, like they just help up everybody that yeah. needs help. I really admire that. And going back to the residency, like, what's next for you here? Like after uh, this, so after this, um, you know, one of my I've been just really looking at um, doing getting some more opportunities in New York, you know. So there are a few galleries and just resident other residencies and other opportunities that I've been just looking to apply to and and, and getting going. And um, tomorrow I actually have a show at um, Aquaba Gallery in Newark. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah. So and how long would that show last for? That show's up until. Um, the end of July, I believe. It's a part of... There's, like, a festival going on right now. North, It's called North to Shore. Oh, I don't know. And it's, like, a three-city between Asbury Park, Newark, and... I can't remember the third city. Asbury Park, Newark, and another city. And they have, like, different performances going yeah. on in different um, parts. Oh, of that's this. dope. Yeah. Yeah. So her show is in conjunction with um, Aquaba Galleries run by a Caribbean um, oh, wow. curator. That's Laura, really cool. Laura Palmer, yeah. And so she's having... It's a group show with me and a bunch of other artists okay. from Jersey. And, and That's so really cool. Definitely honored to be a part of that show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely excited. If I'm, I might be away, but I'll definitely try to make to make it. Um, and I'll share that on Instagram, too, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, of course. But what I wanted to ask also is, you mentioned that you're in California and Tulum. Do you find um, that experience and that traveling like somehow ends up in your work? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, I did so much work in California, and um, I actually is I met a really amazing family there that they still um, they've been looking after a lot of the work I did when I was there because shipping is so expensive. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, um, with California, the early months that I was there, I did a couple um, landscape paintings mm-hmm. of just my environment. So um, I did one of the beach as well, and so. That was pretty much where it stopped in terms of um, the California in, um, influence in that work. But Mexico, definitely, um, a lot of the culture there definitely seeped into my work, even till now. Um, just like the Mayan culture. And um, after I left Tulum, I went to Jamaica for six months and then I went back to Mexico and then I was in the... Um, um, I was in Merida, like that okay. region. Oh, you could yeah. Say, oh, I love it over there. I haven't been, but I heard it's beautiful. Yeah, you would love it. Yeah. You would love it. The uh-huh. culture out there is so yeah, rich. Yeah, like, I love the, Mexico, yeah. The art, the music. Like, one time I was walking down the street, and there was just this guy walking, just playing um, a saxophone. Uh-huh. Just very casual. Yeah, and they yeah. Had this beautiful, they had this beautiful um, jazz club. And restaurant. Oh wow! And it's open to like I think like three a.m. Wow! And so like they have like an upstairs rooftop area where you just have bands from all over. That's just so amazing. Yeah. Wow. One of the it's, I think and my friend Rodrigo was actually telling me that. Um, Is he Brazilian? No, he's um he's from Guadalajara. His oh, okay. his father's from Spain and his mother is. Um, no, that's gonna like a very common like uh, yeah Brazilian name. Rodrigo. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um he was telling me that Merida is actually like basically the safest city in Mexico mm-hmm. and beautiful yeah it was, it, there's actually some elements of it too that kind of remind me of being here like the northeast yeah just some of their downtown areas there would be times where I felt like I was in yeah. um, Jersey City a little bit uh-huh. and just beautiful the architecture everything gotcha yeah that's yeah. dope and then going back to uh, ideas and inspirations where does ideas come for you like because you mentioned you travel a lot um, that's where my ideas come from when I'm in motion like in a plane or driving yeah. where do ideas come for you like is it like when you're sleeping when you're just like chilling out or what's that process like for you yeah um it's a mixture sometimes when i'm taking a shower um sometimes from books Mm -hmm. so like i'll keep certain books around me um just for especially um like i i have books that have like a lot of african art in there masks and so sometimes i'll pull from that sometimes a thought will just come to me just randomly (laughs) 
you know, and sometimes it really is just those things traveling, sitting on a bus somewhere in Mexico and just looking out the window yeah. and just seeing a scene, just seeing like a family walking or yeah, something yeah. and all of a sudden like an idea comes to me. So it's, it And what's comes the process like for you? Do you like write the idea down? Do you like leave it in your head to like incubate? Do you go to like your notes app or like how does it work for you? Like when you see something? Um, some t- a lot of time I like to take pictures. So if it's something that, if it's if it's like a if I'm like looking at something specific in my environment and I'm like oh whoa this and this I mean, is the idea yeah. I'll take a picture of that and then I'll add on to it with other ideas or um, gotcha. sometimes even when I'm in the studio and I'm in the process of creating um, other ideas will just come in the midst of while I'm painting and then mm-hmm. I'll just either remove something and add yeah. that to it or just add that onto what I was already doing. And I have a question. You mentioned sometimes you get in early and you leave by six or five ish. Yeah. How do you handle? Because I get like a lot of people ask this question. Like tells me, ask me to ask the people I interview. Like how are you? How do you handle? Like when you go to a studio, you show up, you do the work, but then like it, it's just like an off day. Like how are you able to bounce back from that? Like do you kind of push yourself to stay there until the product is finished, or do you like chill out and come back? Like try to try to come back a different yeah, day. Yeah, I usually chill out. Um, and the cool thing about being here at Eskif and. Um, having the other artists around is that sometimes I use that as time to just go sit down and see what Leonard's doing or okay. have a chat with Louise. Me and Louise, um, we, we've had, like, we bonded the most out of um, everyone here. So we have a lot of talks just about, you know, African culture. Sometimes she'll, like, share her insights with me. Um, sometimes I'll just look at her work and oh, just that's give beautiful. feedback. Yeah, you guys should do a collab. Yeah. Yeah. That would be yeah, amazing. I think that would be great, too. Yeah, that would be dope. See if she has time. I, know, I think she's leaving well, next Wednesday, so okay. we'll see. And then this residency, um, I believe today like today is the last day. Is that correct? So today, Yeah, today is the closing reception. Closing but, reception. Um, the 28th, which is next Wednesday, is, is like the final the day. Last so day. that's when we move everything out. And another group is going to come for, I think they have a July, they have a summer residency. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah. And then can you share with us your Instagram and website just so, because you have, like, the f- events coming up so people can, like, keep track and attend yeah. your upcoming show? Yeah, definitely. So the um, the Instagram is jgoldingart, J-A-Y-G-O-L-D-I-N-G-A-R-T, and the website is jgolding.art. Got it. And then if people want to reach out for you to, uh, for commission, are you open to, like, commission? Because I had a previous at, guest. Um, at the moment, I'm not doing commissions, but... Hey, I mean, if the, if the price sounds, yeah, yeah. sounds the idea appealing, is dope. then yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, sounds so. good. Um, do you want to share with us what you're working on in the moment? Yeah, so um, right now, one of, the, one of the series out of the many that I'm working on is um, it's a series of this royal family, and they're from a village called Magia Blue, which is, that's Swahili. Louise has also oh, been wow. helping with Swahili, yeah. So a lot of the works out title and give Swahili titles and things of that nature, and they a lot of these characters they have purple skin and um they have their own symbols so i you know these are all symbols that i've created myself and mm-hmm. just gave gave meaning to oh, wow. as well so it's going to be like a whole universe and what kind of medium do you use do you like do you have a preference it's like between oil or acrylic or so oil sticks oil is my oil is like my my ultimate favorite but um I haven't been using oil much in the past few years um because it was just easier to travel and use acrylic yeah. And so, um, I've just still been like yeah, in that yeah, zone of just gotcha, gotcha. using acrylic. But um, I think after after this residency ends this summer, I'm just gonna go right back to mostly doing oils. Got you. But, yeah. And will you be based like in Jersey or? Yeah, I'll be in Jersey for. Um, I want to say through the fall. Um, I do have some plans to travel, but things have been falling through a lot recently mm-hmm. so i don't know it's kind of like up in the air got you i'm supposed and to be going to ghana at some point oh that's so yeah. amazing oh wow that's so yeah, cool that's also another place that's that's like heavily inspires me yeah my work are you doing like a residency there no so in ghana um uh, my aunt i have family there oh so wow my aunt she's um my mother's sister she's um she's she's had land in ghana for years and during the pandemic she moved out there for good Mm -hmm. and she's building a village so oh wow yeah she um she granted me a a piece of land oh wow that's so beautiful that's amazing congrats i have to go over there and like survey and look at the land and figure out how i want to build and things of that nature yeah please take as many pictures as you can so we can like live through you and your adventures there that would be dope 
Yeah. Jay, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. I'm thank so you. excited um, for everybody to come check your workout today at the Mana Escaf. Uh, Escaf reception. Um, congrats on that again. And it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for being on the podcast. Likewise. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. This is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right, guys. Today I'm here with Jay Golden. Yeah. Uh, we previously met at Mana Contemporary during his... SCAF residency. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce that right? Yep. Okay, because I always murder that SCAF. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult, by the way. So thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad we get to talk of about course, your creative process, your inspirations, and much more. Um, do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, born in Jamaica originally. I moved to the U.S. when I was seven. I actually came here the same day that Mike Tyson fought Holyfield. So oh, wow. Like, like, as soon as he bit his ear was when I walked into the house with my uncle's no house. Way. Everyone was watching the fight in my uncle's house. Wow. And so I just remember, I actually might do a painting of that one day. That's pretty dope, yeah. But I just remember we knocked on the door, they opened the door, and everyone was like, ah! Oh, everyone, my God. Screaming. And I'm just looking around, just seven what years old. What is going on, yeah. Seven years old, just looking around like, what's, what's going on? And then, like, I just remember looking at the TV, and they were showing the replay in slow motion. Oh, wow. I just saw him, like, biting in his ear and just spitting it off. <laughs> That's but yeah, crazy. so um, I started drawing like at the age of six, and then throughout my life, I would draw on and off like a lot of. Um, when I first really was like developing my art as a child, a lot of it would be inspired by like comic book characters. My cousin, my older cousin, he drew as well, and he had a bunch of comic books and stuff like that um, Spider Man, Superman. And so a lot of times I would try to copy some of those characters mm -hmm. especially when I got into like Pokemon I would sit for hours and draw Pokemon characters but art was never something that I told myself oh I want to be an artist it was just something that I enjoyed doing yeah and after I graduated high school I had no idea what I wanted to do and I was like you know what like I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna study art because I enjoy doing it. I can sit for hours and doing it. it's just something that always brought me some type of joy and pleasure and so i went to essex county in newark um but the i did most of like my general education there like my like math and everything like that they didn't really have any good art classes and then from there i transferred to Kane mm -hmm. university in union and that's when i like really had some good mentors and from there it was just like the rest was just kind of history oh wow and you mentioned um one thing I find fascinating that you said that you enjoyed art as a kid, but you didn't think that you would pursue being an artist. I find mm -hmm. that very fascinating because almost every guest that's an artist says the same thing until they get much older. Yeah. Which I find very um, interesting to yeah, think about. Yeah, because it wasn't like a... Um, there are artists in my family, but not really... In terms of like the artistry in my family, a lot of them are musicians, especially like on my father's side, with mm -hmm. like reggae and things like that. Um and I didn't really go to any galleries. Like once, I think I, there was one time um, I went to an art museum, might have been Newark actually, where my, my cousin, my older cousin who I talked about, he he used to love drawing. Everyone mm -hmm. actually looked at him as an artist oh, when wow. we were younger. And so his mom used to take him to this life drawing class that they would do at the museum on Saturdays. And one Saturday I went with him and we were drawing this sculpture. That's like the one thing that I remember from being a child, like like the one interaction I had with like public art in any type of way. But besides that, it was just when I got to high school, I had art class and stuff, but it wasn't really, I didn't have a large exposure to art, like how some children, like they mm -hmm. go to the museums or things like that. It wasn't like that. So 
I didn't really have a didn't really have anything that pushed me to say, oh yeah, I, I definitely want to be an artist. But it was like more of a innate thing. Like yeah. I was just drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe your creative process? Um, do you like to work in the daytime, in the nighttime, or do you just like go and you just create whenever like inspiration um, hits yeah, you? Yeah, so it it kind of it changes. Um, during the time we were at when I was at Eskiv. It was more so in the daytime, and then I would leave like around five, six, sometimes seven p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's periods where I'll stay up late and paint. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm kind of taking the break. I'm taking the month off just to kind of reset because I was starting to get a little burnt out. But um, I don't know. The, it it kind of changes, goes on and off. But I would say for the past year, I've been leaning more towards daytime mm -hmm. daytime and then like i'll take breaks and sometimes i'll just like watch a show or something watch mm -hmm. a documentary listen to podcasts and just kind of rest and then start again the next day and when you are creating let's say like you spent the whole day in the studio creating and it's not going as you planned are you able to are you the artist that like steps out for the whole day or do you kind of like push yourself to finish or how do you handle that um yeah, usually if it's not going the way that I want it to go, dep well, uh, it depends, right? It's like, if it's a painting where the concept is is um very meaningful to me, or like even personal, mm -hmm. I'll try to just push myself past the frustration a little bit and get it to a point where I feel okay, I feel happy with where it's at right now, mm -hmm. and then I'll stop. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll just, um, other times I might just stop, take a break, like go take a walk, um, just step away from the art and just do something completely mm -hmm. different. So as you mentioned, you're taking a month off because you're feeling burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you take care of your mental health artistically? Um, so for me, it's, Nature helps a lot. Like I'm, I'm like a. I love nature, um, especially if I'm not. Um, if I'm not, if I'm not traveling, like mm -hmm. traveling is like the top of the list for me. Mm -hmm. But when I'm not traveling, like right now, um, I definitely like to like find a reservation area somewhere. I live mm -hmm. in South Orange, so like there's a lot of um, reservation areas oh, wow. where you can just be like completely immersed in like just tre by trees and mm -hmm. woods, and like they have waterfalls and stuff. So. Stuff like that, walking the dog, just being outside, um, meditating. Like I meditated this morning, actually, and for me, that practice, I kind of go in different cycles with my meditative practice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have periods where I'm not really meditating much, and then I'll have other periods where I'm just like every day, just kind of meditating. Oh, so, wow. um, hopefully, I can continue that <laughs> from today <laughs> yes, to like yes. another month or so. Um, because I know every time I meditate first thing, like it, the it kind of helps. Yeah, it kind of mm -hmm. helps the rest of my day just like go smoothly and just I'm able to like really be centered for the most part. Mm -hmm. So like those are different things I like to do. So you mentioned your love for nature. I did notice like a lot of nature in your work, mm -hmm. especially the I remember there was one with a little kid in a green field and he was like running towards kind of like I think the camera. I think it was a oh, picture. Yeah. So that's that's um. That's my nephew, Ken. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's my nephew, Ken. Shout out to Ken. And um, he actually likes to draw and paint, too. But oh, cool. That painting, so that that one is like a... That's probably like the... I'm trying to think of the other ones. That's like probably the most personal piece I've done mm -hmm. this year so far. And that painting was um, basically... It's kind of like a self-portrait, mm -hmm. even though it's my nephew in a painting. Yeah. Because... If you, he's holding this mask in his hand and basically that mask kind of signifies a shift in my um in my art like right before I graduated from Keene in 2015 my friend at the time he had a the, the um, girl he was dating she had this theater mask and I guess she used to, she used to dance and stuff like that and for some reason, I was just drawn to this mask. So then I would put the mask on a lot of times. I would oh, wow. um, 
take photos of myself with the mask and then I would like draw mm-hmm. like do sketches of myself wearing the mask and then it started um I started giving the mask to other people to wear like friends that were like um studying art with me and then I started like developing characters based on like their personalities and their mm-hmm. backgrounds and stuff like that and the first character was basically created from my personality his name is Aman and so that mask kind of signifies that character and this universe that I've been kind of developing since mm-hmm. then of these fictional characters some of them have like special abilities and stuff so in the painting Kenny is kind of bringing the mask to me the title of the painting is called You Drop This so it's mm-hmm. like I dropped the mask oh okay so like as the viewer anybody who's looking at that painting um like Kenny's kind of engaging you as if you're me and then at the same time as you're looking at Kenny, mm-hmm. um, from my point of view, as a creator of it, I'm looking at um, like a reflection of my childhood. Yeah. And so like the the scene, the landscape around him, mm-hmm. that's actually from when I was recently in Jamaica a oh, couple wow. of years ago. And we drove, I can't remember where I was, cause that's actually a still from a video. Can't remember where we were driving, but I just loved that whole landscape. And so basically the landscape just signifies um, just like family lineage mm-hmm. and just, you know, this little kid on this huge, mm-hmm. vast land is just like signifying wealth and like an estate. Oh, wow. And so it's just kind of like depicting just the richness of my family lineage or just anybody in general yeah. who may have like a deep history or roots. So oh, wow. that painting is like super, pr- I'm happy they didn't take that one actually. No, <laughs> yeah. no that's a beautiful yeah. painting because what I thought when I saw the painting, I thought it was either like, you as a kid but i also like my first reaction was thinking that it was like you manifesting your future son in the future yeah. and like you that's know, a great take too because manifesting and projecting yeah. like how you want how you see yourself like in 10 15 yeah, years that and yeah. subconsciously that could be a part of it too yeah like, but to I, it definitely makes you feel like you're in the moment like he's running to you to yeah. show you something or or like give you you know what i mean like how kids yeah. are when they're excited so it feel like you can almost like feel like the humidity you can feel like you're yeah. the grass like you know swinging but yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, grass one. is like one of my favorite things to paint. Yeah, yeah, because it's there's so much like there's so much character mm-hmm. like in that you can like really find in grass, especially because like I like to observe grass a lot, like if I'm outside or things like that. And it's mm-hmm. just like just looking at even just the different types of greens. Like sometimes it's like a every time I paint grass or like trees and stuff like that, I'm always. Um, pushing myself to kind of find that balance between um getting it to look realistic enough Mm -hmm. but not being extra like i I don't i'm not really one of the artists who who's um trying to be hyper realistic yeah it's just that perfect balance like i'm always about just find that perfect fine balance yeah yeah no i got you between you see my technical ability but then also me expressing that expression yeah. so that you can actually feel something yeah so you can feel that energy and another thing that i like how you use like mixed media on your paintings like yeah. i remember i forget the name of the series but it was like 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 orangey red ones and you had like seashells in there oh yeah so yeah, like, like how do you do that like do you collect them or is it like from your travels and like how do they end up like getting on the canvas for you so it's um those specific pieces that you're talking about the the cowrie shells that's in those pieces, um, they're from this. I guess I don't know what exactly that thing was. It was something from Africa though. My aunt, who's in Ghana now, she left behind. Um, she left behind a bunch of African masks and different mm-hmm. things in a barrel. Oh wow! And when we opened the barrel at the house, I found this this um. It has a handle. It's um underneath the shells it was like a basket type of texture Mm -hmm. it's a bunch of um is that hay i'm trying to think if that's hay or like a straw type whatever that is yeah no but it's kind of like this like oval it had like this oval shape to it i don't know what it was used for but it had a handle on it and so that entire thing was just shells yeah the entire um thing was just shell and so basically i just pu- pulled every shell off oh wow i pulled and so like all oh wow those pieces, individually yeah. wow okay so all those pieces those four f- those five pieces collectively that i created uh those all the shells and the pieces were pulled from that and i just used like a um 
I use this gel medium that's um it's good for gel medium you can do so many things but you can like either use it to give your paint some gloss mm-hmm. like the acrylic paint some gloss yeah. this and extend it but then some of them you can also use it to do like collage mm-hmm. so I just like put down a gel medium and then like I put like thick layers of it down mm-hmm. and then I just like put the shell in the in the parts mm-hmm. of the painting that I want it to be and then once it dries it just kind of stays and it dries clear too so you mm-hmm. can paint on top of the gel medium afterward and it's just perfect and in that series that you did the uh, is it because i like the vibe that i got was like the, all those pieces that were like on the right side of the wall of your studio like the mm-hmm. orangey ones yeah. was it kind of like not just a series but it felt like they're almost like related to each other like it was like a family portrait you know what i mean like they call it be like yeah, either characters so they were all or from a specific um from the same village in okay um Cote d'Ivoire the the Ivory Coast mm-hmm. in West Africa and that's the um the Dan people mm-hmm. and they also go by Yakuba mm-hmm. um and so basically the smaller ones those were actually all from the same reference photo there was like a the reference photo I used from that was like a a group of all these um girls posing together mm-hmm. and you know they had the face paint and everything in the headdress and they are like these they do this ceremony in one of the villages there where it's um it translates to like a juggling dance mm-hmm. ceremony in English and basically the men of that village they take the girls and like they swing them around and things like that and they throw them in the air mm-hmm. and then they have these um like a mach- like a machete type of knife oh, wow. <laughs> and they catch them on the tip of the knife oh, wow. cutting them and then it's like a whole thing it's like yeah. a whole ceremony it's like the everyone else in the village is circling around them and there's music and stuff like that and drumming and so um i did a painting towards the end of 2022 where it actually like kind of focuses in Mm -hmm. on these two girls in the air like flying Mm -hmm. in the air and behind them is like the sky and the trees so Mm -hmm. like that painting is called like the flying yakubas and so i wanted to kind of do like a deeper dive into their characteristics um, with the spring residency and so that's what those smaller portraits were basically just kind of like zooming in and just highlighting these different characters and then the there was a bigger one as well on that wall it was like a it was a, um what you call a diptych which is basically two pieces put to um, two singular pieces put together it was the one with the the woman had the good green eyes and there was a purple guy bef- beside oh her. yeah 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 so like that one now was kind of me um basically kind of imagining um like what one of their deity deities or goddesses could look mm-hmm. like and so like the green eyes just represents like this um concept that I that um that I play around with some of the characters I'm developing of like the green eyes it signifies like a, um you ever seen the avatar yeah yeah, yeah 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 with the eyes like, yeah yeah like that that character now she has like an incarnation of like what's called the great spirit so mm-hmm. like um in that painting on her clothing there are these symbols on her clothing and the symbol actually is a signal is a symbol that means the great spirit within so like mm-hmm. that's another thing that i've been also um diving into with the work um which is a lot of that is inspired by ghana where during the pandemic I started um some um I would do these paintings and sometimes these you know these symbols would just come out naturally mm-hmm. and it wasn't until like the like last September where I actually started like looking at um some of these older paintings and then looking at certain symbols that I that I really felt drawn to and then I would draw them in my sketchbook mm-hmm. and then I would just kind of sit with them for a while and then whatever whatever meaning um kind of came to me i would then write down the meaning beside it to like actually start giving more definition to mm-hmm. these symbols that would come out and so i i've been just kind of intentionally placing these different symbols in some of the mixed media paintings i've been doing recently just to kind of um place hints yeah. at some of these characters and their story and their backstory and things like that on um as i'm developing so that later on down the line when things are a little bit more in order and I present whatever, whoever story I present, yeah, first, yeah, yeah. Whichever, whether, whether it's in a book form or a film or whatever, um, p- 
people can actually say, oh, wait a second, I've seen that painting where I saw mm-hmm. that symbol and yeah. things like that. Kind of just like subconsciously. Yeah, subconscious, yeah, yeah. Subconsciously just like placing these little um, trinkets in people's brain. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. And going back to your creative process, so when you're traveling, are you taking pictures of things that you see and then later painting them in your studio? Sometimes, yeah. Um, definitely a lot with the... Well, both. Um, sometimes with people... Um, I like to sometimes do life portraits too. Mm-hmm. So even when I was in when I was in Mexico, um, when I was in Tulum, I did a bunch of life portraits of people that I met, and I actually gave them to the people. Oh wow! And then, but then other times as well, I would take photos like the um, sculptures I would see. I do a lot with sculptures, um, mm-hmm. like the Mayan mask. I took a lot of photos oh, okay. of the Mayan masks. Um, sometimes even rocks or just like different types of architecture or things like that. Animals, like I'll just take photos and just kind of just, sometimes it takes me years Mm -hmm. to even go back to some of them. Oh, wow. Because I'm just always collecting ideas and just things that kind of stand out to me. And then I just kind of let time do the rest. Yeah. And that was actually going to be my next question. So how do you, um, I would say like decide when, like when you go through your pictures that which one will get like a painting out of it and which one will not, is it like by energy or by like inspiration? How is it for you? Yeah. It, it, it kind of just goes by how I'm feeling that day in the studio. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, it's like in the, in case of this residency, um there was a we had to um we had to do a proposal when we applied for the residency mm-hmm. so we had to kind of just give an idea and and ideas could ch- could shift mm-hmm. but we had to basically submit um a general proposal of the subject matter of what we're going to be painting and so i already kind of knew the realm that i was going to be working in mm-hmm during during the residency so i would bring sometimes i i use sometimes i paint my references from the phone and sometimes i'll have printouts like i have like a i have like a folder of like actual printed photos oh wow and so i i brought those in at some point as well and sometimes i'll go through some of those and say okay you know what this one this one could work within the subject matter that i'm doing right now Mm -hmm. so Sometimes it's just a luck of the draw. Yeah. Really. Um, other times, other times, if I'm just if I'm not doing a residency or something, I'm just and I'm just creating something. Um, it could be t- oh today I feel like this today I feel, mm-hmm. you know I feel like that. And do you always use like the whole photograph, or do you use like pieces from different photographs and combine it into one? Yeah, I'll do that too. I use pieces like so like with the one of my nephew. Those were pieces from different photographs, mm-hmm. like the um, the. Like the reference for him was actually outside of the house last summer when I got back, and that was actually from a video. Mm-hmm. And so, like a, l- a lot of times too, I like working from the videos because then um, I can take screenshots of certain parts oh, of the videos yeah. to really help me capture the mm-hmm. movement I want. Because in yeah. the video, he was um, he was walking up the stairs towards me, mm-hmm. and he was asking me if I was leaving. Oh, so like it, I feel like just that still that I got out of that video, mm-hmm. it really captured like the that essence, engage- yeah, yeah, that essence, that engagement, and that he was actually looking at me and like saying something to me. And then I just took the scene from mm-hmm. when I was in Jamaica and just paired it with that. And it just sometimes it just comes together. Sometimes it's, it's um, sometimes ideas also just come to me while I'm in the process of painting, mm-hmm. and so I might start off with a solid um, idea and then in the middle of it I might say oh no you know what I'm going to change that like mm-hmm. something might just hit me and I'm like oh whoa yeah I'm going to do that instead mm-hmm. so it my process um, sometimes can be all over the place but I just like to I kind of like to just um, respect each part of the process whether mm-hmm. I'm working like um, with a very concrete idea or whether energy just kind of comes mm-hmm. to me as I'm in the process, I, I I try to collaborate between all of them in a way. I got you. And then going back to your creative process, are you an artist that when you're in the studio do you, and you're creating like a painting, do you like to hear um, like an output after you're finished or during during your creation? <coughs> I know that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, t- um, 
typically, in terms of what I would like, mm-hmm. um, it would be after. But I don't mind getting input during the process either because sometimes, even if I don't want to hear it, mm-hmm. um, sometimes that input is actually very beneficial. And like during the residency, there were times where if I felt like I need, I, I would stop and felt like uh, I needed a second uh, um, view of it. Mm-hmm. I would go over to like Louise or somebody okay. and and say, "Hey, could you come check this out for a second? And mm-hmm. then I oh, would wow. invite them to give input. Yeah. So, but for the most part, um, I would it would be like after, so that because sometimes what happens is somebody might come into the studio and give input on a piece, but it's and they they might give input on something that I already. Um, recognize, yeah. but they don't realize that I'm still yeah, working yeah. on it. It's not even, it's not close to being finished yeah. yet. So some, it, I'm weird. I, I go all over. No, no, I'm like that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and going back to your creative process, um, have you ever like created something that you didn't like, and how do you handle that? Like, do you like me? Do you throw it out, or like do you get angry, or do you kind of just like put it to the side and then later go back to it whenever you feel inspired? <laughs> So I used to, um, like, during the time I was studying art in school, um, I would rip up a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would rip up a lot of stuff and throw it do away. Do you still do that? Not as much anymore, no. Like, the only time the only time that I may do that now is if I'm doing, like, a um, a sketch. Like, because mm-hmm. some, sometimes, sometimes I'll do, like, a, um, what you call, like, a thumbnail sketch. Okay when I'm preparing for a painting and that's just basically like I'll like draw like a like line a, yeah I'll draw like a rectangle or a square depending mm-hmm. on what how the canvas is shaped I'll draw that in my sketchbook and then sketch out the image inside of that box just to kind of give an idea of the composition of the image inside of the um, canvas and sometimes if the sketch isn't going out well I might just crush that up and throw it away uh-huh. but that's that's about it for now like and any actual painting that I do if I don't like it, I I make an effort to not destroy it anymore because um I don't know, I guess my my um I just changed over the years. Yeah. Like, uh, somebody would like it. Like yeah. you know, no, me too. It, like it when I was younger. For me. Yeah, I used to do that when I was younger. Now yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. 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 And then um when you get stuck, um like artistically, like when you get st- have you ever had like a writer's block like artistically? Um, not in a while. No, because my question was going to be, how do you get through that? Yeah, not in a while. I mean, well, okay, so like I don't usually talk about this part of my creative, my creativity, but Mm -hmm. I've also done music as well. Oh, wow. So I've definitely had writer's block in that sense Mm -hmm. of um, just like writing lyrics and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think the last time I even recorded any music was like 2017. Um, but with the art, I have periods where, but for me, I think that's just me just not wanting to paint sometimes, Mm -hmm. or just being just, it's not really a block. It's just some days, like I'll just, um, besides the break I'm taking now, there'll be times where I'll just be like, oh, I don't feel like painting today. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of people that know me, they think that I paint every single day. Yeah. And because of the creative output, but there's, I'll go sometimes three, four days without painting, but it's not really because it's a block or anything. It's just, I guess, not really feeling up to it, just mm-hmm. just being tired. Yeah. And when you're, as you mentioned, you're creating music, are you doing that while you're painting or is it like two, is it like a whole day just for music and a whole day just for painting? Um. So at the time, I would I would allow the my process w- usually would be kind of it wasn't all the time because um, I first started I first when I first started writing music it was actually when I started going to Keen which is interesting it was like during it that uh, that exploration of um and I actually came I actually started writing after I was reading Tupac had this poetry book. It was a poetry book that was created um, called The Rose That Grew From Concrete. Mm-hmm. 
And right in that, I think this is like my, um, I think this is during like the spring, during my spring semester at Keene in 2012. I, w- I just um, started reading that book. And for some reason, I just decided, hey, I want to start yeah, writing some poetry that's too. That's pretty dope. And so like I got, I started um, writing some of that. I started writing some poetry and then one day I just decided, you know what, let me just find some instrumentals and yeah. see if I can do something yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. And so like the it kind of happened just very organically and the first year between like twenty twelve and twenty thirteen, a lot of the stuff that I was writing was kind of just um was mostly just a, just me exercising and trying to get better mm-hmm. um, in terms of flows and different things like that. So it was like all over the place. It was like very explicit stuff at first. Um, uh. um, a lot of stuff inspired by just like 90s hip hop, yeah. um, Eminem a little bit because I, I grew up listening to a lot of Eminem. Yeah. Um, a lot of controversial stuff about like the government and stuff like that. It was mm-hmm. like the, some of those earlier stuff was like that. And then I would say by like to like late 2013 to 2014 um i started becoming more interested in um storytelling Mm -hmm. and so i noticed that around that time from like 2014 to like 2016 ish um as i was developing this um universe that i I was just talking Mm -hmm. about um it actually started one of the the first concepts came in a song form and so it started becoming like I started becoming interested in um, more melodies also starting to explore some of um, my Caribbean roots in the music like harmonizing yeah. and, re- and reggae influence and just making it more about um, like this world that I've been building and, and creating music like to be like a soundtrack for the art mm-hmm. um, and then I kind of just like just stopped recording altogether just stopped like working on music and just been like heavily focused on just mainly the art and developing it but i don't know who knows like i might do you think you're gonna go back yeah i I think it's gonna happen it's just um i don't know when it might it might be like a change of environment that i may need to like really bring out the inspiration for that so Mm -hmm. we'll see but i think as the art develops um it will help when it's time, especially because I really do want to work on some type of um, film mm-hmm. at some point for these characters and things like that, just to kind of um, expand, expand on the art and make it a little. Do you bit mean bigger. like a like a like an anime movie or like a CGI type of movie? Um, or both. Both. I think with the animation aspect of it, that may take more time. I'm, um, Maybe artificial intelligence AI could like do some cool stuff, you know? Yeah, when it, if it, um, I think so. Like, if it, do they have like any AI stuff that creates? I have actual no animation idea, yet? but everything that I use so far for like, um, because I've used like in terms of podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like different things that I use that I thought, oh, do they have this? It went above and beyond. So I'm pretty sure they have like, yeah. you know, you like describe the characters, description, yeah. and then I, like create something I, for you. I, um, because. Like back in 2015, too, when I first started with this, um, with this universe, like some, I created like a a script, mm-hmm. um, and it was very the ideas were very loose. And then recently, since the residency, I actually used ChatGPT a little bit to help me um, develop a short, um, a short film that I want to do. Okay. With um, one of the next series that I'm going to be building, which is more kind of like a family. Um, mm-hmm. It it's going to be diving into um like a royal family in mm-hmm. one of the villages that I'm that I'm working on and so it gave me like a really cool thing and then I yeah. started tweaking it a little bit so mm-hmm. um i think for that one i want it to be like a like a using actual real people mm-hmm. and um doing like some body paint and stuff because yeah. those characters have purple skin Oh, wow. But eventually, I do want to. Um, I do see things taking shape in like an animation form, but mm-hmm. um, I want to do it right, you know. So like, I want to have like a whole team, yeah, um, assisting with that, and like actually have like a team of animators and like just 
I'll like workshop with them with the actual ideas and things like that and they handle like all the technical mm -hmm. the technical stuff yeah and do you have um no, no, it's good. Yeah, it's red. Um, and do you like? Do you ever think? Um, oh, actually, before I ask that question, do you have any of the music that you mentioned that's published? Like, is it like on SoundCloud yeah. or any streaming yeah, yeah. platform? Yeah, yeah, I have some stuff on SoundCloud. Oh, oh I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah, I have some stuff on SoundCloud. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to share the name or? Um, if you don't remember, you can just like post it to your Instagram and then we'll share your Instagram later. Yeah, yeah, I'll share. I'll, I'll send. You know, I'll yeah. share the information with you and then. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll include it. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, put. I'll include a link. On, yeah. Um, because you know what it is. Sometimes I get like a little embarrassed. I don't know why that is either. Bro, like, I know. I know what you mean it's so tough. And then when you actually like show it to people and you get a good reaction, you're like, wow, I should have yeah, done it sooner. Because um, especially with some of the old like there was this um one joint project I did mm -hmm. I think this one was the 2014 one um it was a it was like a joint EP I guess I don't know mm -hmm. I don't even know how to describe this stuff but, um there was 12 there were 12 tracks the first four um was my friend Chris who I, who I worked on with the project mm -hmm. with it was like his solo yeah part of the project then the second four songs were just me, mm -hmm. and then the last four was like um, you two, me and him. Yeah, oh, that's pretty dope. So like this, so, um, I really enjoyed the project. Um, yeah. for the most part in terms of when we but when I listen to it now, sometimes I'm like, oh, I get like, yeah. I don't like to listen to some of those old songs. But you know, I ran into somebody the other day that went to high school with me, and he was like, oh man, I really love that project you guys did. Oh wow! And I think at the time when we released it, there were um, I don't know if they're still around. That piff. There used to be this um oh like a mixtape drop mixtape thing site yeah yeah yeah, that yeah. I remember you get like samples or loops from there yeah or we, publish it yeah and people used to drop I a think lot it's of still on yeah yeah I think it's we still on yeah the mixtape there at the time and I think we we also released it on SoundCloud yeah so it's up on SoundCloud too but I remember we had like a thousand downloads and I was just like oh I was, wow at the time I was just like wow yeah like, because I didn't even to this day I don't look at myself as much of a um, musician or rapper I mean it's a part of you know my family is a musician and stuff. But for me, it was just like I was just having fun. We mm -hmm. were just experimenting, just putting music out, and just to see that um, we actually had got like some type of a good reception. From yeah, it. it was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, but I have some of those songs up there, and I have some of the, I have some songs on SoundCloud as well that I recorded post that um, project, mm -hmm. like some of the um, ones from like 2016, I think. Yeah. And do you ever listen to them when you're creating? Not much. No. They're like, um, there are a few of them that I do have on my phone. Yeah. In my, in my like iTunes library that sometimes if I play my whole library on shuffle, they'll come on and I'll mm -hmm. listen to them. But And what's your reaction? You're like, like, oh my God. Well, the ones that I've made sure I had on my phone, yeah. those are some of the ones that those I Those are really the bangers. Like. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's like a, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I'm very weird when it comes to the music. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's bad music. It's just that, I guess because it's been so long now. Sometimes when I listen to it on here, I'm like, oh, yeah. Like I just get very critical of myself yeah, sometimes yeah. with the music. And do you see yourself like trying other mediums in the future? Because you mentioned like the music, the filmmaking, yeah, the CGI definitely. characters, definitely. Like even um. Um, since 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 I was doing the Escaf residency, I started getting into sculpting. Mm -hmm. So the, um, that's been fun. I'm I'm actually interested to see how that expands because the type of sculpting I started doing was like more like found object sculpture. Mm -hmm. So I um, took like tree barks and stones and different things like that, and just kind of created these um these these um forms out of it. But I'm interested at some point later on down the line to getting to like more traditional sculpting, like using clay and like ceramics and stuff like that. And and I did I did take a ceramics class mm -hmm. when I was at Keene. So um, and, and how was that for you? Do you have like any ideas? It was it was cool. Like um, is it something like you will try to pursue in the future if you have time? Yeah, I think so. I think like time, the the space, mm -hmm. just somewhere where I can just like really have my uh, ideally i would like to have my own space if i'm doing something like that yeah where i can just access Vibe, yeah, all the yeah. time whenever i want and just be in my own zone and um probably do like a 
definitely I would like to definitely probably work with like a um a mentor mm -hmm. who can teach me like the ins and outs. I'm very I'm very um big on kind of having guidance when it comes to exploring mm -hmm. new things. Until like until I do that I don't even like to put those types of labels like even photography. Like I don't yeah. like to call myself a photographer even though I can take photos, like because I'm not trained in like the language of photography mm -hmm. or like I don't even know what all the things mean like the F, I don't even know like yeah. the difference between yeah, me the too. different F stops and all yeah, those yeah. different things so like well, I feel like once I get trained and I know those things then I can feel confident about calling myself a photographer because there's an actual skill to that and sometimes that gets overlooked mm -hmm. um, do you want to share with us uh, are you inspired do you have like any inspirations in regards to like artists whether it's like an art business music business fashion anime filmmaking okay. is there anybody like you look up to that you get inspired by yeah so um like during the period when i was going to keen uh -huh. and i think even up to like maybe like 2018 or so mm -hmm. um they're pretty much people like um caravaggio mm-hmm um, I studied I studied some of his paintings because I really liked how he would um do like those spotlight. Mm -hmm. He would be very he he had a way of just depicting light that was just so special. And then Frida, I really liked like the emotion, like how she wasn't afraid to be vulnerable with her artwork. So mm -hmm. I studied that a lot in terms of just inspiring me to just be as open as possible with my work. And then Picasso kind of came later after I watched him. Um, have you ever seen this documentary called Genius? No. It, well, it's not a documentary that. actually. It's like a um, it's like a series. Like, mm -hmm. so they had three seasons. They, um, when like each episode is a person. Yeah, the first season was Albert Einstein about his oh, life, okay. and it was like ten episodes. And oh, so like a whole season for yeah, per like person. Oh, wow. Playing, okay. Playing and and they they go from like their childhood. Yeah. All the way through in ten episodes. And the second season was the Picasso one. Oh, I loved it. And like it would jump back and forth. So is it on streaming or is it like on YouTube? It. Hulu. 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 Has it. Hulu got yeah, you, Hulu got has you. it. And then the last season they just did was, um, Aretha Franklin. That was a good one. Oh, I love Aretha Franklin. But oh, I love her. <laughs> that series kind of um that kind of made me understand Picasso a little bit more in mm -hmm. terms of his art because prior to that I didn't really care much for his art I didn't really I didn't even care to study to study what yeah. he was about but through that series I actually learned like um not so much about his inspiration but um more so just about his why like what he really wanted mm -hmm. to do and that kind of inspired me because he was very technically trained but mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't care about just yeah. being another yeah. Oh my God, yeah. technical artist. Yeah, so his earlier work, it's like perfection. And yeah. later on in life, it's so like yeah. fluid and free. And, and that's the part about him I didn't know. Yeah. Even though I could have easily f f found that out when I was going to school. But mm -hmm. it just, I didn't really care much. And so, yeah, like, you know, I started to kind of, um, I started to kind of like get a little bit inspired by that. And I would like watch that show whenever I yeah. felt Whenever I felt like kind of down or mm -hmm. just felt discouraged, I would watch that show just just for like more inspiration. And recently, there's there's a lot of artists now that I just follow on Instagram that I really love their work. Um, I think I mentioned this in the last time, like Rayless, Rayless Vasquez, a Dominican mm -hmm. artist, Kyrie Turner, um, a bunch of people. Like there's so many. There's just so many. Riley Holloway, he's an amazing artist from Texas. That um, I actually met him when I was there in 2020. Amazing work. And music right now, it's kind of, um, I go through these weird periods when it uh -huh. comes to music too, um, besides my own music. Like, I go through these periods where um, I don't listen to much music. Oh, wow. Um, this is probably the most music I've been listening to in the past. Um, is that true, though? I've been listening to music a little bit more consistent these past few months. And I, I guess mainly because of the commute. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would take the train oh, okay. back and forth, Jersey City for the residency, mm -hmm. I would just have music playing. So, um, this is like the this is the most I've been like actually like yeah. 
listening to music and checking out new albums. Um, I've been listening a lot to um, who's who's the artist I've been listening to recently? Gunna, mm-hmm. and it's my first time listening to Gunna yeah. really. Um, but I really like this new album that he has. Um, there's a band that I love called Krongbin. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I love their stuff. So I listen to them often. Um, he, there's this band from France, um, Lucy and the Yakuza, mm-hmm. and I listen to them on SoundCloud a lot. They're, they're, I, I've been listening to that album for like a few years now, actually. So like I play them sometimes when I'm in the car. Um, but yeah, Bob Marley. Of Obviously, course, yeah. yeah. Like a, all um, day, yeah. Um, Lee Scratch Perry. I don't know if you ever listened to Lee, Lee Scratch Perry. He's um, he's one of Bob Marley's contemporaries. Okay. And he his music is a little different though, um, because he wasn't really interested in reggae. Okay. Out of all his peers, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't interested in just doing like you know, the the reggae style that he did. He was more of like a rock star. So mm-hmm. like he would have. Um, he actually passed away a couple years ago. And he was good friend. He was actually good friends with my grandfather. What I found out. Oh wow. Um, he he would dye his hair a lot, so sometimes you'll see him with, like these pink hair, green oh, wow. hair and stuff like that. Um, and he made music all the way up into his old age. Um, and he would tour a lot. Um, but his music was very. I'm trying to find a way to this way to describe him so that you can get an idea of, yeah. of um an artist who he's like he kind of like um his personality sometimes when I would see him reminded me of like a Jamaican version of like a I saw traces of Ozzy Osbourne. Uh oh wow. Like I was I was gonna say Woody, David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah like, I can yeah. see a little bit of that David too. Boy, David yeah. Bowie, Ozzy Osbourne is yeah. Um, uh, I never listened to Willie Nelson, but yeah, something no. about his look, especially uh-huh. when he's older age, for some reason. Got you, but Nelson's with colorful hair. He look, yeah, um, very, but just very experimental, very mm-hmm. out there. Um, so I've been listening to his project. Um, Is his music like on any streaming platforms? Yeah, you can find it everywhere. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, YouTube cool. YouTube everywhere. I've been listening to his album that he did in 2004 called um, Panic in Babylon. Okay. When I was in Jamaica recently, my cousin um, played it for us, and I just been I've been listening yeah, to that a lot. He's I'm funny. Check it out. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a funny guy. Um, yeah, so I've been you know I've been listening, just dabbling in different stuff. Um, Killer Mike, I just recently checked out his album. Um, yeah, so like I feel like right now I've been kind of just whenever whenever I'm like looking for music to listen to, mm-hmm. that's kind of like okay, cool. Like I'm in like a I'm in like a certain space right now because usually I would either just listen to whatever I already have in my library or I'll go through a period where I'm not really listening to much music and I'll probably just, it will just be like podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like most of the time if I'm in the studio painting, I'm listening to like a podcast or something or just sometimes I'll even like watch a, um, watch a movie or a show while I'm painting which is weird because I'm not yeah. really paying attention yeah to exactly movie, no I'm like I, that too yeah. I never watch TV I just listen <laughs> and I when like, I actually watch it I'm like this is what they look like yeah and do you like when you're doing that when you're creating and you listen to like different things like podcasts TV shows documentaries does whatever you're listening to influence what you're working on or is it just like a distraction like a a way to focus on what you're creating um it depends I I find that for me, um, lately, if it's like a, if it's anything in like the anime realm Mm -hmm. or something like that, or like action type of realm, where it has like these different types of character personalities and stuff like that, um, it it can influence what I'm working on because, Mm -hmm. you know, every like the stuff that I've been working on for the most part. These past couple of, um, these past couple of years have definitely been in that realm of storytelling, fictional oh. telling, fictional um, character development, mm-hmm. myth uh, mythology. So anything that kind of can like give inspiration yeah. with that, I find that sometimes some of those elements seep into the into the work. Oh, that's pretty dope. Um, and do you also like? Do you always have like have had that reference? What in like in regards to your work? Um, I think for like the past yeah for for like a while now actually mm-hmm. um it's it's usually 
a lot of the stuff that I've been doing in the past five plus years have been, you know, have mythological inspiration, um, you know, African inspired tribal and mm-hmm. in just indigenous type of inspirations. Um, and then there, there are just like those few pieces where it will be um, just inspired by people I interact with. Like, yeah. Whether it's people I meet, friends, I'll do portraits of friends. That's like an ongoing thing. So I feel like it's just, it's been just in that realm. Like a lot of the work is just in that, for me, it's in that realm of, um, it's either inspired by my travels and my direct environment and what's around me or inspired by um, mythology and different indigenous and tribal communities. Mm -hmm. It's like just that, just that that yeah. main that main um well, focus I would say yeah and do you, have you have like do you always go back to your previous work and try to like reference something into like the present time sometimes um if yeah if it if it um if it relates to what I'm working on now like even that those pieces that you were talking to me mm-hmm. about earlier with the with the orange and stuff yeah. like that um that subject matter when i when i look at those pieces it brings me back to 2017 when i um i did a series called omo mm-hmm. and that series was in it it depicted the the different tribes of the omo river valley mm-hmm. in south southern ethiopia mm mm-hmm. And so, like, that whole series was just about kind of celebrating um, the beauty of these tribes that have been on this land in this region of Ethiopia for centuries. And there was some controversy. The reason why I decided to focus on that group was because at the time I dis- um, I found out that, you know, they were a lot of them were being displaced from their lands because... Um, you know, corporate interests, what happens yeah. everywhere, like, you know, it's, um, corporations coming to the land and building, the, um, there's mm-hmm. this huge dam that was built on their land oh, wow. that was, like, you know, using a lot of the water in yeah. the river um, to, like, power their plantations, sugarcane plantations. And a lot of these tribes are, like, some of them are semi-nomadic, so some of them mm-hmm. travel during certain seasons, and yeah. some of them um, depend on the water to fish and things like yeah. that. So their, their livelihood was being Damn. disrupted, mm-hmm. and the government, the Ethiopian government wasn't really doing much to help them. Yeah. They, they were just, you know, taking whatever money they were getting from these corporations and um, these people were just being put in camps and things yeah. like that. And That's horrible. Yeah, so I wanted to I wanted to kind of just shed a little bit of light on that subject matter, but I didn't want the paintings to be showcasing any type of um, struggle. Mm-hmm. So I just focused on some of the, the tra- beauty, yeah. Like some of the paintings showcase them during their traditions. Like mm-hmm. they, they have this um, in, in the um, I think that was the Hammer Group. Um, they do this, they do this ceremony. It's like a rite of passage for boys to become men, mm-hmm. where they have to run across the backs of these bulls mm-hmm. without falling. They have to do it like sometimes, oh, wow. yeah. And once they do it then it's like now you're like a man yeah yeah um like your wife is chosen for you so it's yeah. like very um very mat- very mat- that whole ceremony too very like elder matriarchal type of society and mm-hmm. um as they're preparing to to do the ceremony the sisters of those of those boys they're also there ch- mm-hmm. cheering them on and chanting and then there's like this some of it is very like some some people might look at some of the stuff that they do and be like whoa like that's mm-hmm. that's strange because yeah um leading up to the ceremony of them running across the backs the um the women who were like sisters of some of these boys going through the through, through the um ceremony they like taught some of the other men mm-hmm. and the men whipped them on their backs oh, wow. and you see like these little yeah. swells on their backs but it's like a part of their ceremony oh, okay it's like it's, a, it's like a part of the actual practice of their ceremony um jay i want to thank you so much for being on my podcast i really appreciate it we got a chance to finally talk at a longer length than last yeah. time in your studio um do you mind sharing your instagram and website with us oh yeah so the instagram is jay golding art that's j-a-y-g-o-l-d-i-n-g-a-r-t and the website is pretty much the same thing, jgolding.art. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, got you. Um, so please make sure to follow him. Um, I'm going to be sharing the music too, along with the oh, artwork, yeah. if you don't That's mind. Right. Yeah, and no hopefully next time we talk again, it will be about your new cinematic um, film work and all of that and sculptures and pottery and stuff like that. So thank you again for being here. Until next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online.